So here's my favorite camera, my 1960s Kalar Bolex H16. I believe it was an H16 Rex, but basically it's a 16 millimeter camera and it's just really nice. It's a wonderful camera. This particular one happened to be very well taken care of and it's it had full maintenance before I got it. It came with the original case and everything. It's from the mid 1960s. Well, I really love it so much that even though I want to upgrade it, I don't want to possibly damage it. So I decided to get a second Bolex, which that one would just be a crappy one that I could tear open and cut parts off of to make it to turn into ultra 16 aspect ratio. Well, I ordered one and this is what I got. I thought this one looked like an H16 camera. And the seller thought it looked like an H16 camera. It was advertised as a 16 millimeter camera. Unfortunately, it's actually an H8. It's an 8 millimeter camera. Also, there's a lot of issues. So I paid like $600 for this one. But this one was guaranteed to work perfectly. This one was $140. And I'm definitely going to get my money back. I'm going to send it back because... This is not an H16 camera, not worth 140 some bucks. Look at that lens, totally moves around. But yeah, this is definitely a lot smaller. doesn't seem to move. Oh, it's serial number 144652. This is obviously much bigger. This camera is loaded, so I can't really show too much about it because I don't want to ruin the film that's in it. So, yeah, it's like, it's kind of a disappointment. Part of me wants to keep it, but I just, I hate 8mm film. No offense to all the people that are nostalgic for it, but I just don't like 8mm film at all. I'm a 16 millimeter and 35 millimeter person myself. So this is really stiff. Kind of interesting. I've never seen such a small daylight spool. We have a film cutter. Now this entire mechanism here is very different. It's very hard to undo this. See, the Bolex H16 Rex, if that's the right one, has a smaller one where it's much lighter to open up. And then you have a little button in the center that undoes it and so it's much smoother and much finer action i'm not sure if the h16s of the time had the the same type of layout or if this is just cheaper because it's an eight millimeter it's also interesting the h16 rex doesn't seem to have this maybe this is just an a16 i'm thinking it is a rex though i'm not sure i believe this little lever over here makes the dinging sound so to wind it up which this one does happen to work so it is good Then we can see that, oh, I'll set the frame rate to 16 frames per second. Every so often, it should make a clicking sound. Yeah, you can hear it. It's running at very low speed because I set it down. So yeah, it's kind of unfortunate. I was wanting to do several projects where basically I want to widen the gate so I can have widescreen footage because I'm not actually recording the audio onto the film anyway. Also another idea was what if I could cram an LED behind here and actually turn this into a, a miniature projector, 16 millimeter projector. I guess it is, as it is now, I could turn this into an 8 millimeter projector. So if, if you do this lever, like it can be instant or it can be on as long as you want. I'm actually working on using this to make to capture images of the Milky Way. I'm thinking about making a mechanism to do like one minute exposures and have a time lapse of the night sky. That'd be pretty fucking cool. I'm gonna try that with that one. Well, it's interesting because on this one obviously it's for eight millimeter film, so the perforation is every other frame, if I'm not mistaken. So whenever you do that Instead of rotating one perforation, because this is still 16 millimeter film that's recorded on, 8 millimeter film is still 16 millimeter film. It's just it's cut down the middle and exposed differently. So this takes the same exact film as this one, just this one will be cut in half at the lab. Well, this one all uh, the actual mechanism of this only progresses it half of a 
16 millimeter frame because that's an 8 millimeter frame. So it's kind of interesting that they actually have it in the mechanism, but yet it's so similar. Now one thing I noticed that this one doesn't have compared to this is that this one has a button that you press and it has these lever, an entire mechanism that goes up here that actually presses up on these and pops them off. But this one doesn't have that, you have to pull it off manually. So that's interesting. I, I, I'm not sure I'd rather, rather have that than have that. Interesting, so these can go one way. This particular one seems to have been not stored very well. It was being sold as basically like a, um, well, just for parts, I think. But it's like, well, it's misadvertised. It was, it was definitely a H16 on the advertisement. And that lens, that does not fill me with confidence. I was kind of hoping that this would be an, a 16 millimeter lens. So even if this didn't work, I could always push it over here because I'm always looking for more lenses. You can also notice that there is no... Was that a shutter control? I use this to fade in and out. There's, oh, there's also no clamp to lock the front thing. I guess the biggest thing would be that it's a reflex camera. Like this one is. So this one, you have the image coming through this. Whereas this one, you actually have you actually have a prism that separates 25% of the light off into the thing, the viewfinder. So you actually, with, with the newer one, you get to see through the same lens, whereas this one you don't get to see through the lens that you're shooting through. So you could be totally messing up. Like with this one, you'd be shooting, you would be viewing through this lens and then shooting through this lens, and you better hope those are the same lens, otherwise you're going to mess it all up. I really like this little turret mount thing. It's so awesome. Now, as for actual features on this, it looks like there's not too many big differences because a lot of the differences were slow, you know, over the years. So, first off, these, like the film progression, looks different. This one has a dot, this one has different methods of marking. They both have the clutch. The nameplate's different, so this one has made in Switzerland and the French wording of it. Then this one has that same mechanism, looks about the same, looks about the same. This one, this one goes down to 8, mil, eight frames per second, and this one goes down to 12 frames per second. Which, honestly, I don't see why you need an eight, 8 frames per second anyway, so that's pretty good. That was obviously for very old projectors. Then these two things are a little bit different. This one has like a little grips on it, and this one just is smooth. Oh, there's obviously a screw part there. I guess that would be for mounting something to hook onto here. I've actually been working on that, so I just now noticed that. Nice. With these kind of things, you always kind of just notice things slowly, because there's so much detail packed into here. So many years of work. So I'm not sure if this viewfinder comes off or not. Everything's so stiff on this. Yeah, it looks like it might come off, but it's just... Oh, I'm, I have to return this, so I'm, I don't want to mess it up. Overall, it feels like it probably would actually work with film if I put it in it, but it would only film 8mm, so let's say, well... That's unfortunate. I don't know why, I'm just not a huge fan of 8mm. 8mm seems kind of normal and mundane, like everybody has 8mm, but 16mm, oh, 16mm. That's whenever you're getting into the actual, like, the nice looking stuff. You can actually film a decent movie with that. Well, I'm going to send this back and let's look for another one. Then maybe we can do a video about actually tearing one down and looking into it, maybe restoring it if it has any issues, because I'm I'm no longer looking for a really good one. I'm just looking for kind of a really crappy one that maybe was sitting in an attic for 50 years, and I don't really care if it just, even if it just has little parts, maybe I could just swap out the parts, but I'd rather not open this one up, because this seems like one of those things that if, once you open it up, something's going to get lost. It'd be really cool to be able to upgrade it and modify the gate on one 
Well, I better go take this back to the post office and send it back. I hope you guys enjoy this video and this very quick look at this camera that I really haven't had that much time to look at, but it's 8mm, so who gives a shit anyway? I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya!